Lindsay Jew, and you're watching Crypto Jew. Today, I'm here with Raul Yadif. And Raul, why don't you introduce yourself to people? Hi, I'm Rahul. I work with a real estate blockchain platform called DreamChain. And I'm a senior technical officer there, working and researching more about uh, cryptocurrencies, crypto platforms, and uh, most notably on a crypto to fiat payment systems. And I understand that you're going to walk us through IEOs. So maybe you could start off by telling people what an IEO is. Sure. An IEO is kind of like an initial coin offering system offered by the exchanges itself. So ICO usually stands for initial coin offering, whereas the IEO stands for initial exchange offering. They're very similar, except that IEO is powered by an exchange. That mm -hmm. means if you are part of an exchange or if you have gone through the KYC system of an exchange, you can directly participate in any ICO that is being offered by that exchange. Most notably, of the top 20 exchanges, only two, Coinbean and Binance, are now offering ICO services. So what are some of the notable projects that are doing IEOs, or if I'm a project, why might I be looking to do an IEO? The most recent notable projects are uh, BitTorrent, mm -hmm. and um, Bread, and Gifto. Uh, they, they were launched by Binance, of course. Mm -hmm. And Coinbean is now trying to raise money for ICO companies like uh, RGB, which is like Ranking Ball. It's a, it's a mm. gaming company. Mm -hmm. And FCC called Five Color Coin. So interestingly, Binance helped BitTorrent, BitTorrent to raise $7.9 million and Bread and Gift to around $20 to $30 million. And their upcoming IEO project is called Fetch.ai, which they're trying to raise around $30 million. So it's, mm. it's big money when it, it comes big to money. In I, today's market. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I can see the why it's attractive for projects then. They're looking to IEOs to raise capital, especially in the bear market today. Sure. Um, do you think that this is a good idea? Do you think there are some risks that people should be aware of when taking a look at IEOs? Well, there's a problem. Problem like uh, an exchange like Bitfinex mm -hmm. cannot do an IEO because their backlog of uh, KYC is being pending for about three weeks. So mm -hmm. if you are trying to do an IEO, you, are, you want to be on an exchange with, in which the KYC AML process is re really, really fast. Because when you want to raise money, you want as many people to be involved as possible. Certainly. And, uh, some exchanges, almost all the, uh, the big exchanges, would not allow you to do an IEO if you are registered in the US or in South Korea. Mm -hmm. So that they, they kind of stop it, and some companies in uh, some countries in Africa, they, they, uh, Binance and other big exchanges wouldn't allow you to buy tokens from from ICO. Okay, the, so s stick to Singapore, Malta, those areas, and you'd yeah. be okay to do the the IO Switzerland. Okay, okay, good, good points. Anything else that you'd like to add on your research with IOs or what you've seen? Uh, in strength, uh, this is interesting, uh, CZ Binance, the CEO yes. of Binance, he initially said the IEO are kind of tough to, to help, to advertise because of the legitimacy of any project. Like it's hard to find what, what project will be, uh, you know, success in the future. So when I exchange like Binance is backing people that, hey, we find this thing to be a legitimate uh, project to be invested, that means Binance is behind that project in a, mm -hmm. in a way. So in 2017, 18, he tried to not add IC as a platform in Binance, but uh, from last year, March, to this year, February, there has been a one-third decrease in the exchange traded volume. So the, they kind of have a pressure on increasing the, the amount of trade happening in, those, in their exchanges. And one way is to bring in more ICO projects so that people are attracted, bring in more people in a way. So for the exchange, you're trying to add liquidity to your project when you're adding ICO projects. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, for, for an ICO project to be listed, they have to be authentic because now they are being endorsed by an exchange. So mm -hmm. it works for both parties, but for an end user, it depends on they, do they want to be on an exchange uh, or they can just buy it. If it is an ERC20 token, one day it will be out of the system, it will be on Ether Delta. So do they want to buy it on that exchange some other day? Mm -hmm. So it depends. Of, do you want to wait for it or do you not want to wait for it? For both an, an exchange and both the IEO company or ICO company who is trying to do the I, IEO, mm -hmm. uh, it helps when they are listed on an IEO. But the only drawback here is, do you want to sign up on that exchange? Do you really want to go through that process to, to be a part of an ICU like that? Great, well, I think those are a lot of good points that you brought up for people to check out IEOs. And um, why do you think that that's trending now um, versus fundraising and other methods? That's an interesting question because uh, last year, the, the ICOs raised around 1.2 billion dollars in July to September mm -hmm. whereas they kind of raised 10.5 million dollars in the first five months of 2018 so people are now skeptical mm -hmm. that uh, about all the ICO project that's happening because a lot of fraud uh, has happened fraud and scam has happened in the ICO world so when an exchange is trying to back those things people would be uh, people would kind of uh, have an idea that if an exchange, if a big exchange especially is backing some ICO project, that they are pretty much legitimate and are compliant with the ICO rules and they are answerable to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Okay, well thank you very much Raul. I appreciate you coming in today and being on Crypto Jew. Uh, just signing off. Thank you for your time. And thank you for having me. Bye y'all.